The cardiac pulmonary involvement includes an interstitial lung disease, pulmonary hypertension that the lobotus has said before, and the hepatic pulmonary syndrome particularly happens in, in those with advanced liver disease, especially after splenectomy, which is rather historical now. The immunological alterations are as well common. They have a very uh, high prevalence of both antibodies with polyclonal lymphomatous, monoclonal lymphomatous, and the tendency or the risk to malignancy, with, whether with multiple myelomas, hepatocellular carcinoma, or even lymphomas. The metabolic abnormalities are a lot. They include a chronic inflammation resulting in a hypercatabolic state, rough retardation, chronic fatigue, reduced body mass, a dyslipidemia with hyperferritin. And as we find that these comorbidities might uh, complicate the treatment even with type 1 where the treatment is available. The neuropsychiatric manifestations can happen in type 1 and as we said, Parkinson's disease is one of them. The metabolic disorders including the hypermetabolism of the insulin resistance, immunological uh, complications as said before, tendency to malignancy, cardiovascular complications and even gastrointestinal. Uh, the hepatic involvement, because it's uh, where I'm interested, uh, they present with the hepatomegaly, raised amyloplasmolysis, and the condition progresses to fibrosis and hematocellosis with secondary portal hypertension and appearance of osophageal diseases. The hepatopalmary syndrome occurs in the very severe cases, particularly those who have underwent splenectomy, and they have a tendency to develop malignancies in the form of hepatic cellular carcinoma, and I can see in a few minutes that there are also non-HCC focal lesions and cholelithiasis as well. The hepatomegaly, we, we know that the normal size of the liver is something like 2.5% of the body weight. And the increase in the liver size is by multiples of the normal uh, weight of the liver. If the multiple is from 1.25 to 2.5, the multiples of normal, so it's a moderate hepatomegaly, and the less hepatomegaly if it's more than 2.5 times the normal size. And there is always some degree of enlargement in all cases of the Gaucher disease. The cause is of the accumulation of the Gaucher cells in the liver and the associated inflammation as well. Splenomegaly usually overweighs hepatomegaly, but in the case of Gaucher, we find that the hepatomegaly overweighs splenomegaly. Then we should investigate other causes because massive hepatomegaly can occur in the very severe forms and, as I said, after splenectomy. The liver enzymes are elevated, the ASC and ANT, as well as the alkaline phosphatase, which has a bone source as well. The increase is usually mild to moderate, and it does not correlate with the size or the severity of the liver disease. The liver histology shows the Gauchy cells, as we said, the wrinkle cell appearance. These cells usually accumulate in zone 3. What is zone 3? We know that the hepatic rubule has at the periphery the portal areas, and at the center there is the central vein. These cells, they accumulate around the central vein. So when they press the hepatocytes there, and these hepatocytes die, and they are released by fibrous tissue, they produce something like a post sinusoidal portal hypertension, as we see in blood gangs in the room and the sinusoidal obstruction syndrome. They are, the hepatocytes themselves, they do not have any accumulation of the material, but they are compressed by the storage cells around with the inflammation and fibrosis cells in, and ends in cirrhosis. The consequences of fibrosis, we all know about them. They are the cirrhosis, the portal hypertension, the subject paralysis, the hepatopulmonary syndrome, and because the fibrosis is around the central vein, it mimics the Buckheimer syndrome, and if fibrosis sets in, it partially regresses with enzyme replacement therapy. Portal hypertension has the risk of uh, bleeding, it threatens the life of these patients, and it is the major cause of premature death in Gaucher disease patients. It is caused by hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis, by the massive splenomegaly where that increases the portal blood flow, and as I mentioned, the post sinusoidal obstruction with the fibrosis in zone 3. Splenectomy is not a solution for this portal hypertension. And the effect of splenectomy even is a bit deleterious. It increases the liver size, it increases the fibrosis, and it might cause hepatic fibrosis syndrome as well. They have hyperferritinemia, as, as we said, they have a chronic inflammatory state, which is very common in the Gaucher disease patients. The ferritin levels, they do not correlate with the, the, they do not correlate with the amount of iron in their body, but it correlates with the severity and with splenectomy, and it significantly decreases with treatment. It is because of the chronic inflammation, the impaired macrophage function, and the low dysregulation in the hepcidin ferroportin uh, pathway. 
This hyperfluorinsulinemia is not associated with a systemic iron overload, except if the patient has a degenerative disorder that is associated by the uh, congenital hemoglobin chromatosis or acquired conditions like good splenectomy, alcoholism, metabolic syndrome, chronic viral hepatitis, or the presence of malignancy. Uh, the concomitant fatal diseases that can occur with Boucher, the chronic viral hepatitis, if these patients are multi-transfused, the vascular disease if they undergo is splenectomy and the thrombus extends from the uh, splenic vein into the portal vein. If they historically they used to get uh, repeated blood transfusions and they have iron overload, and a fatty liver happens because of the inflammation that is ongoing with insulin resistance, they have a tendency to overweight from the disease itself, from the lifestyle they lead and the recumbency or the decreased activity. And even with the enzyme replacement therapy, they have a tendency to increase uh, uh, body weight. And there are under-recognized manifestations of Cauchy disease. I was very much fascinated with this title because it was the title of this very uh, elegant review of literature. And because I found two of the beloved names, one of them is our dear colleague, uh, Professor Mecca professor of uh, hematology in our hospital, and professor at Yale State, professor of radiology. Both of them, even Maggie is the corresponding author, where they spotted some light upon under-recognized manifestations of the disease. It was published in 2021. These are the pulmonary involvement, the lymphadenopathy, and the glossiologies. What about the lung involvement? It is common in the glossiologies patients, and it generally falls in three categories. Whether the alveolar macrophages are involved or interstitial tissue involvement, or the severe life threatening pulmonary hypertension or hepatic pulmonary syndrome. And this happens because of the consolidation of the epidural or the Gaucher cells and the presence of interstitial fibrosis, particularly in type 3, uh, pulmonary hypertension that limits the quality and the quantity of life and hepatic pulmonary syndrome with liver involvement. The lymphadenopathy sometimes is missed. Uh, it, may, it might mimic malignancy. The common sites are the mediastinal and the mesenteric lymph nodes. If the mesenteric lymph nodes are too large, they might compress the lymphatics, resulting in a protein losing enteropathy. And these lymph nodes are a marker of Boucher disease severity. Uh, one of the red flags that this patient with Boucher is develop, developing protein losing enteropathy. Uh, it increases when the uh, Boucher disease biomarkers like the hydrocarbonyl increases. Uh, if the patient has abnormal liver function tests, particularly the low albumin, if they have low triglycerides, proteins, and chylomicrons, if the growth in children is full quick, or adults with Boucher disease having unexplained weight loss and development of lower lip edema, all this should alert us that the patient is developing from the compression by these enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes, protein losing enteropathy. The Gaucheromas, which are rare, are clusters for, uh, of Gaucher cells causing masses. These masses mimic tumors, so they are called pseudo tumors. They are commonly present in the liver, the spleen, the bone, the lymph nodes, and sometimes soft tissues and abdomen. They are slowly growing. And they usually will happen in adults, but sometimes have been reported in children. And because they form the pseudo tumor, they have to be differentiated from the cellular carcinoma and from the fullness. And this figure is from the same uh, manuscript or article I told you about. And here they are pointing with these arrows to these Gaucheromas in the spleen that have to be differentiated from malignant masses. Could Boucher disease be misdiagnosed? Yes, because uh, yeah, the main manifestations are the hepatic spleen, maybe and the throat cytopenia sometimes. It might be misdiagnosed as autoimmune hepatitis, as hemochromatosis, as nephrit even. And because of this incorrect diagnosis, the patient either is misdiagnosed with another hematological disorder like leukemia, uh, lymphoma, hepatic thrombocytopenia, or other liver accumulation diseases or skeletal disorders including the sickle cell because of the pain and pain crisis or the metabolic bone disease. The consequence will be a delay in the diagnosis and delay of institution of treatment with complications like cholesterol necrosis, severe bleeding, severe bone pain, sepsis, pathological infections, rotary dilatation, and advanced liver disease. And these patients might be subjected to unnecessary treatment to the other diabetes that were misdiagnosed, plus the psychological stress of not finding an explanation for the symptoms they have. The delay in diagnosis may be because of the lack of awareness or the non specificity of the symptoms. The patient is deprived of chance of treatment because there are available treatments, whether the enzyme state replacement therapy or substrate reduction therapy. When I have a 
uh, by increasing awareness, we'll be able to screen high-risk populations who are having spleno-negative plus minus bronchospathopenia. Uh, the Gaucher registry that has registered around 5,000 patients says that spleno negative more than five times the lower size of the spleen. It's a moderate or a massive spleno negative happens at 86%, and the bronchospathopenia below 1.2,000 is present in 60%. So we have to increase the awareness of physicians for screening because diagnosis is by not invasive methods uh, looking for the uh, enzyme activity in a dry blood spot. We should include the high risk, those who have unexplained spleno-negative, whether clinically or by imaging, and unexplained thrombocytopenia, and we should exclude those who have a known cause for their thrombocytopenia, whether in the pregnancy or from hypertension or hemolytic ailments. And there is a very wide range of symptomatology that might uh, go on with this Gaucher, the thrombocytopenia, the anemia, the diathesis, trophic foundation, the negative splenic nodules, gold stones, polyclonal uh, gamoptis, monoclonal gamoptis, the bone involvement, the lung involvement, a very wide range of symptoms. Therapy includes enzyme replacement therapy and substrate reduction therapy. The difference is that the uh, enzyme replacement therapy has been licensed for use in children, while the substrate reduction is not yet licensed for use in children. Uh, it replaces the deficient enzyme, which is very good, and uh, at least there are fairly confident glucocerebral disease preparations until now. It's given intravenously every two weeks. The, su uh, the substrate reduction therapy is given orally. It reduces the formation of the glucocerebroside by inhibiting the glucocerebroside or the glucocerebride synthase enzyme. Both improve the hematological, visceral, and skeletal manifestations, and even the substrate reduction therapy is more effective for the bone lesions. The enzyme replacement therapy should be administered early uh, for the yeah, it regresses most of the symptoms, including the hepatosplenomegaly, cytopenias, bone pain, bone crisis, and osteopenias, but it cannot resolve, uh, resolve the irreversible damages, like the hepatic fibrosis or the vascular necrosis of uh, the bones. The drawbacks of the current therapies still really are very expensive. They are inconvenient, particularly for death given uh, by weekly intravenously, and it's a lifelong treatment that has to be given throughout life. And there are still many unmet needs in the Gaucher disease, whether for the diagnosis, the therapies, the related bone disease, the complications, and type 3 in particular, there is a lot to be known about it by monitoring patients. Would they like to have to try the interactive questions for the subject? Our soil, the old Gaucher disease, is an autosomal recessive inherited disorder. Both parents are carriers. What is the probability that each child will inherit Gaucher disease? We are his son, Zanabula, Jenkins. Which statement accurately describes the pathogenesis of Gaucher disease? Mutations per gene. We prevent the synthesis of acid beta glucosidase, which results in decreased activity of cellulite and accumulation of glucosidase cellulite in Gaucher cells. Well, with allylic activity of glucosidase synthase, which leads to accumulation of glucosidase. Well, with decreased activity of acid beta glucosidase, which leads to accumulation of glucosidase cellulite in the ribosomes of macrophages. Well, with allylic or open production of glucosidase, which leads to accumulation of glucosidase cellulite in macrophages. Any of the which characteristics differentiate Gaucher disease type 1 from type 2 and 3? Acute neuropathic Gaucher, the type 1, well, a chronic neuropathic Gaucher, well, there is no differentiating characteristics, well, a non neuropathic Gaucher. Non neuropathic Gaucher. Non manifestations of Gaucher is similar between children and adults? Who are the folks? All summer, yeah, in acute neuropathic, they're going to have a whole set of things, you know? Okay, such for adults. 
طيب which hematological manifestation of Gaucher is commonly used as a marker of disease severity and feeds into effect anemia or thrombocytopenia or leukemia or again thrombocytopenia طيب what is the recommended primary method for confirmation of diagnosis confirmation of the acid glucosidase deficiency ولا radiological evidence of the campus immunomagony ولا blood test the hemoglobin with patients ولا radiographic evidence of bone disease which statement correctly describes the enzyme replacement therapy mode of action reduces glucosine ceramide accumulation by inhibiting glucosine ceramide synthase ولا بيطارد the lysosomes for natural patients we block the accumulation of glucosine ceramide ولا بيتنهبت the clinical manifestations of Gaucher by supplementing as in beta glucosidase which reduces the hydrolysis of glucose and ceramide ولا بيقرر the nutrition beta glucosidase activity by catalyzing hydrolysis of glucose and ceramide هنا دي طبعا عشان كل الناس حاجة كل السنين لا مش بيعمل السنة بس بيعمل دي and thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Hene, very much. Thank you.